If you're trying to get rid of your gym anxiety, then stop going to the gym and just trying to push through it. Sounds crazy, right? But here's the reason why, and seven new ways of thinking that can help. Reasons why you shouldn't just push through your anxiety sometimes is because when you do something that you're afraid of and you see that outcome as a failure, then it can reinforce that activity as being bad in your mind preventing you from wanting to even try it again. What I like to do is change the way that I think and measure the success of an activity instead of seeing it as a failure. Because honestly, any step forward really is success and improvement. So first way of doing this is understanding and accepting that I'm going to suck if it's my first time or even if I haven't done it in a long time. Just like four weeks ago, I started going to the gym again pretty consistently after recovering from long COVID and I am nowhere near what I used to be. I go like one day a week when I used to go six or seven days a week and my weight that I use now is actually my warm up from back then. So that's kind of embarrassing. <laughs> the second way of thinking is to know and understand that most of the stuff that we see on social media is a lie. Most of the stuff on there is mainly for entertainment to get likes, comments, and shares with crazy extreme workouts that they do for like one minute or even like the really unsafe workouts just to get clout. There's also a lot of like fancy editing to really make things seem a lot cooler than they really are. as well as Photoshop editing people's pictures to make them look more thin or more buff than they actually are. The reality is that a gym workout is honestly pretty chill and mellow, depending on the type of activity that you choose to do. My weight training is pretty chill with rest times in between, but then on the other side, you have like those activities like CrossFit or powerlifting that are a lot more intense. Third mental shift is to look at the activities that you're already good at then think of how you got there and copy and paste that for the gym. For example, say you're good at dancing. It probably took you hours of practice and failing to get really good at it, right? You're essentially doing the same thing of practicing and failing, but just copy and paste that with the gym. Knowing if you do the repeated practice that you'll get good over time. Fourth mental shift that I really like is to look back from the future. Do you ever like look back in your life and think, Man, if I was back in high school, I would have asked so-and-so out, or I should have gone out more and traveled more. Pretty much any time that you're looking back on your life and you wish that you would have done things differently. With looking back from the future though, you move the timeline to the future. Or would it be this side of the screen? <laughs> now imagine that you're old and your body freaking hurts and you can't move around without your walker. And old you is looking back to where you are right now in this moment. Imagine seeing yourself never going to the gym or even just driving there just to drive away and never go in. Well, we're here. Well, let's go, huh? Let's go. Is that something that you're just like, huh? I wish I could go back and just would have gone in there and got the workout done. Now you come back to the present moment and you have the chance to go do that right now. About two years ago when I was chronically ill and I couldn't really leave my bed for too long, I'd always be looking back on my life and thinking how I should have gone and traveled more places, how my girlfriend wanted to, or that I wish I would have took my workouts more seriously and not just half-ass them for so long. So now that's why I use back from the future thinking more often to motivate me. Coming on to the last three. So lower the bar of success, number five. So I think of this one almost like a hack for the winner effect. The winner effect, for those that don't know, essentially is once you get some wins under your belt, the higher the likelihood is that we will win at even harder things in the future. For example, depending how nervous you are to go to the gym, you can go get ready and then drive to the gym and mark that as a win and just go home. Well, let's go home. Let's go. 
As silly as that sounds, you have to think of it as a win. The next day after that, you can probably get ready, drive to the gym, and go inside and ask for a tour. Then mark that as a win and then go home. And you just keep doing this while raising the bar each time until you get to where you wanna be. Funny side note, I actually use this to lower the bar on what things I find funny. And that's why people always wonder why I'm so happy all the time. 25. <laughs> so number six is inverted thinking. This one is also one of my favorite ones. So instead of thinking of what you have to do to succeed, you actually flip it around and think, what do I have to do if I'm going to fail? If your goal is to become a consistent gym member and get some really good workouts in, the things you have to do to fail at it would be like not getting ready for the gym and scrolling on your phone instead, or going to the gym and not having a workout plan. Check out my free class, link in the bio. Or not eating enough calories or protein, or just going to the gym for 30 minutes and not even finishing your workout plan. If you do all of these things, or even some of these things, then you are guaranteed to fail. And that way now, you know what not to do. Number seven is the last one, and it is the familiarity effect. Oh wait, the familiarity principle. I swear I can read. <laughs> this pretty much says that it takes about 10 to 20 times of repeated exposure, in this case the gym, to feel more comfortable with something or to like it. But it has to be a positive experience, more often than bad at least. So combine this with the previous six mental shifts, plus going 10 to 20 times, and you should be able to get some pretty good results. I'm gonna make a part two video, but with this one, it's gonna be actual physical steps that you can take to overcome your gym anxiety. So leave me a comment down below and let me know if any of these have helped you. And I'll see you in the next video.